right now, just on a week before, um, you know, obviously we probably think Caleb's one to the Bears. Number two, three, four. Well, four is Arizona, but two, three, quarterback for sure, right? New England and Washington. Is Jaden Daniels and J.J. McCarthy going to be in that mix? I think we lost. He yeah, we it. lost him. I guess you got to wait Jayden, to it. I think there's a separation after Caleb and Jaden. So if I was New England, I'd be looking to trade out of three. I really mm -hmm. would. Because you know Minnesota and Denver are going to be dying to get up to three. I would be looking to trade down, acquire an extra first-round pick, and then pray that Michael Penix is there wherever I trade down to and kind of get the best of both worlds. Interesting. Mm -hmm. That's smart, though. What are the, Ra what are the Raiders going to do? Are, are they going to draft a QB and try to move up? I've heard Davis has given an AP the go-ahead. Can they move up high enough, though, to get something? And is 13 high enough to get a QB? I don't know. So it's a couple of different ways to look at it. I mean, you give up five first round picks to get a Patrick Mahomes, right? Or, or, or Joe Burrow or Josh Allen. Like no amount of collateral will be too much. Right. So they and, – and here's the, the pickle they're in. Because they're at 13, they're probably going to have to give up 25 and 26 first round picks to get up to high enough to draft Jaden. But AP knows Jaden in and out. Think right. about as a head coach, J.B. Smitty, how comfortable you'd be if you knew everything about this kid and you loved everything about him and you could go and get him. You don't give a damn what y'all got to give up. As long as they name Max Crosby or Devontae Adams, hey, <laughs> give it to him. Right. That's true, man. And that's kind of where AP is with Jaden. Yeah, I recruited him out of high school, took him to Arizona State. I mean, the, 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 the relationship is there. I knows the parents' ins and outs. He knows everything about it. There's no, there's no hidden thing that you're going to draft there. So that's the right. only guy I can see them doing that with, though. I don't the know problem is, JB, I know you, you actually like O'Connell, though, too, who, and who, who they already have there. So it's like, I do, I but, it's, but it, Sean, Sean said it best. Like, in this business, you, that's why the Bears did what they did because that puts the GM at risk of getting fired if you don't win. AP now has to say, oh, well, we didn't draft a QB to appease the fan base. We didn't bring in a seat seller. Yeah, I, I don't know if AP can do it in his first real year. Yeah. And the difference between a Aiden O'Connell and Gardner Minshew and what we think a Jaden Daniels and Caleb Williams can be is we've seen Aiden, if everything's right around him, you're playing great defense, you got an effective run game, he can help you win games. Same thing with Gardner Minshew. Those talents that you're going to select at the top of the draft, they make you right when everything is imperfect. Ooh. When the run game ain't working, they make enough plays. Mm. You know, when you don't have talented receivers, they make the group you have elite. Mm. Like, so that's what you're looking at when you're trying to get up and get a Jaden or a Caleb because you're looking at that talent and you're like, damn. I mean, O'Connell's cool, Minshew's cool, but they ain't that. Yeah. And I don't know. Do you, can you see a, a situation where Penix falls? Hard. So I know Penix like AP knows Jaden. I've known Penix since he was a freshman in high school. I recruited the hell out of that kid. He's probably the best athlete of all these quarterbacks. He just does not, for some reason, show it when it comes to running during the games. Man, I watched that kid play basketball for two years. He could have went to college on a basketball scholarship. I'm talking about I can shoot, dunk on the break, drop step, alley oop, all of that. You saw in his pro day, he kind of showed it a little bit. I think he ran four four. He's moving. He's like, moving. for whatever reason, he just – he's such a good pocket quarterback and he throws the ball in rhythm and on time at every level. He doesn't really have to use it in the game. But I, if, if AP's listening, man, I'd sit tight at 13. And and listen, if Penix falls, i draft him. If he doesn't and he's gone, I'd take one of those offensive tackles and I'd pair him with what they have and I'd just get me a, a book in – on that old line, and it's going to help the run game. It's going to help the pass protection. That'll make Minshew and O'Connell better. Like, I wouldn't panic in these drafts. I think this is such a deep draft at tackle and wide receiver. I'm not panicking chasing a quarterback. Uh, I'm just not. I mean, draft capital is, is extremely important because of the cost attached to the quality. Right. So when you're talking about a first-round pick, you're getting what you think is a Pro Bowl caliber talent at a super discounted rate for four years. Yeah, let me ask you this before you leave. Joe Melton, Joe Milton kid at Tennessee that ripped it and had another freakish, you know, display of talent, and we know what he is, 6'5", 240. 
Rumor is that he's accepting the role of playing tight end in the NFL. Do what do you say to that? Because I I would never shatter a kid's dreams if you're that freakish. Like, hey, look at man, we got AR fives floating around. We got a lot of quarterbacks in this league that have gotten drafted and played it. And the, what still sits that doesn't sit well with me, Sean, is that Charlie Ward never took the shot. And, and listen, I talked to Charlie a lot. I'm good friends with Charlie. He made a great decision, played in the NBA, whatever, 15 years. How he had a hell of a career. But I would love to have seen him in the NFL because at that time, there wasn't a lot of Charlie Wards running around. And even though he wasn't the 4-3 guy and he wasn't going to do a lot of things, people think that, no, he was actually a pocket guy too that was really efficient and accurate uh, his Heisman winning year. But I would have loved to see that guy. I don't know if I could deter a kid and say, uh, go to tight end. But if it's going to get you paid and at the end of the day, you can't, whatever they're saying about you, you can't do. Tight end? Well, well, JB, at the end of the day, this is bag talk. What do I have to do to get to the bag? Like, Charlie was like, I want to play football, but if y'all not going to invest the first round pick in me, I'm going to go play basketball. And it worked out. I got that big deal from the Knicks. So the NFL was telling Charlie that we don't value your skill set. And so Charlie said, okay, I'm going to get the bag. Logan Thomas was a quarterback at Virginia Tech. He transitioned to tight end, I think, in Arizona initially. Exactly. Now he's in Washington. He's been in the league a decade. So my advice to Joe Milton, whatever the hell they want you to be, be it, and get to the bag. Period. And the fact that he's moving to tight end, I go into the eight. Hey, I can throw all the Hail Marys. Yeah. Like there it's different ways to make yourself valuable so that you can just hey every year, man. I think the rookie minimum is what, like seven hundred or something now? I mean, so you think never, about that. Get, hey. Remember it used to be one eighty? Right, right, right. Like it was one seventy five when I got drafted. Good God, I was born too early. So I mean, <laughs> whatever it takes to be on that roster and, and get that check coming, you better do it, Jojo. Yeah. yeah, Logan Thomas, man, I was recruiting that cat. He was a big old freak. I was like, damn. I was, hurt. I mean, he might have went JUCO, and I was like, man, I might be able to get Logan Thomas. And motherfucker ended up making it, and and I was like, god damn, he's a big old pretty motherfucker. He was like six six. six he Joe Milton. They the same guy. <laughs> Identical. 